<laughs> hello, people. Hello, ADD, and hello, friends, family. So, um, today is my anniversary. Been married 23 years today. And me and my wife had a very not normal relationship, I guess. Best way I could put it is unorthodox as, as it gets. We've forgotten anniversaries. We don't, we've never forgotten each other's birthdays. But we've forgotten um, our anniversary before. Both of us. I've been out of town before. Um, so I just um, went in and told her, happy anniversary. Love you, baby. And kissed her. And she had forgotten. Like, once again, you know, I don't blame her for it. Um, you know, we are who we are. And, you know, she does her best in life and all that. I make mistakes, too. I forget important shit. It's got no bearing on a uh, relationship. But it happens. That's that's where we're at. So my landlord comes over to my house from time to time, right? And I got a dog. And it was his dog. So he's left his dog with for us. Uh, we've taken care of him. So he comes over, sees his dog. He brings his daughter over when he comes over. So his daughter has special needs. And so they come over a lot. They like to come over on Sundays. Um, they rehash. Mind this, that, and the other. The guy, um, when I moved into this house that same year, that Christmas, his, his wife died on Christmas Day, right? So... He comes around on Christmas all. He comes around a lot on the holidays. He brings his daughter. And that's that's fine. We're friends. We're family. You know, comes over and talks about the house, anything, whatever. You know, I've had to do a lot to keep us here and him not selling out from under us. So we do what we do. So that's that's what it is. That's what it do. So it's one of those Sundays. So he's over and with his daughter. And her and my wife are in the kitchen jabbing and I go in there and tell her it's our anniversary and uh, she said yeah he used to have I was conceited um he used to look in a mirror um so he used to play he used to have a lot of hair and brought me back to all that so yeah that's you know I've I've changed and grown a lot I was conceited you know I had to play on being decent looking Versus to being, um, not being able to keep the best grades. So you, you play on your strengths, your attributes. So uh, I played on that. Some wife's in there saying, yeah, he used to think he was so good looking. He full head of hair and always looking in the mirror. And now look at you. <laughs> so comes around, goes around. All right, just wanted to fill that to, uh, Tell y'all the good, bad, the ugly, embarrassing, all that dumb shit. They're in there ragging on me right now, having a good old time. So I said, I'm going outside to do a video. So thank you, Adam, um, one of these guys here. <laughs> I believe we're friends on Facebook as well. He just commented and asked, and I've heard um, a, a lot of people have asked um, my time in addiction, how I got there. I have, I've, I hear that a lot when I talk to people, they ask questions, usually, you know, how'd you get there? So that makes the old um, gerbil start going, right? And uh, so before I even start on all that, all this shit just blows my mind. Um, I just had a feeling to do another little video with, with our wedding song, and honest to God, I did that video here shortly ago and I didn't even know it was our anniversary but maybe something in me in me did you know subconsciously but I wasn't aware um I didn't think about it until you know recently like way past the time I should have said happy uh anniversary you know like it's now like three something in the afternoon right been awake since you know 10 so there's been a lot of uh conversation back and forth and nobody saying happy anniversary so that's what we're at that's what it do that's what we're like so um yeah these coincidences are a, a mind f to me um there again it happened again on thursday 
a mind fucked over too. Try I try to put that rationally into in thoughts and stuff, and in my head, you know, how's that even possible? How's it even possible that on everything I got off at three thirty three that day? That my wedding song's three minutes and thirty three seconds. While at the day I'm at the address three thirty three. That's amazing to me. Help, like, share, comment. Tell me what you think about all that. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So let's start from the beginning. Um, I never really talked about a lot of this. I've told a lot of stories, the ones I thought were the best, this, that, the third, whatever. Um, I keep here, here, being asked again. Now I've been asked like four or five people who's talked about the, the how, you know, it, you know, share my whatever, my experiences. So this is what it is what I do. At, I smoke pot. And I was a crackhead from 20 through 45 years old. I <laughs> lived 40, yeah, until I was about 40, 45. And, you know, about 40, somewhere between 40. Um, about 40 started. I Was it 40? Yeah, around, f no, shit longer than that. Because crackhead, but I still did crack and started getting into uh, opiates. So as I gradually started getting into opiates, um, the less and less cracks, it had to be more money because opiates are much more expensive, right? So I smoked a lot of crack. Um, my boy DZ, who I talked about, is a drug dealer, and I used to ride with him when I was in my, in most of my drug days. We hung out for like 20 years, right? Um, and so I met this guy and, um, when I first met him, I was probably 30 ish, 28, maybe I was working at Anthony's one day. I told the story, him and a bunch of guys met my boss's wife at the Mexican restaurant up the street. They're all drinking. She tells him her husband needs help. DZ, Tony, um, Sky Manny, there was a bunch of dudes that all were friends and they all grew up together and they were all hellions, all, um, like, make me seem like the, the preacher's choir boy, really, every, I'm like the least, you know, wild out of all those dudes, they were all wild as fuck, still to the day, all in and out of jail and prison, and thank God I have, I've never been to prison. I've been to jail many, many times, but um, mine hasn't been too severe, I guess, comparatively. I'm the only person I know at all the guys that I ever ran with at all, all those guys have been to prison. And probably 30% of those guys are dead. Um, so I was, um, it was, it became um, like peer pressure, I guess, kind of. Maybe not peer pressure. More, more like uh, it was too easy, right? So I meet this guy and um, start out. <clears throat> the day I meet him, I have some Norco. I give him some Norco. And uh, so we're cool with that moment. And then I don't even know how I think he started working. They started doing jobs for Anthony, and I started to meet Deezy more and more. And the next time that I saw him, me and Anthony and Tony and Deezy, if you don't know who Tony is, he's part of this clan in and out of jail, brothers, friends to all of them, has his own wild and crazy stories. Tony's the guy that got us the job at the, um, right next to the, the, uh, big deal in Atlanta. I did this job in Atlanta. I talk about that job. Um, it's where I was working next door and got fired and my boy DZ and Tony got me a job right next door. So that's Tony. So all, so DZ, so I just meet them. Okay. Right. And then we start to me, we all go do a job, me and Anthony and Tony and DZ go to like North Carolina or some shit. Right. We start a job, we leave them, me and Anthony leave them there on the job to do the job. We all go to, out to eat at midnight at IHOP. We go back to the job and 
me and Anthony are leaving, but DC and Tony are staying. I didn't know it yet, but they were already, I hadn't even, I think this is right when I come into my days of starting to snort Roxy's. First time I ever got a Roxy, Tony bring it to me when I was an hour out of town. The first time I ever did it, Tony bring it to me, right? So Roxy's at work, snorted it on a job at uh, two o'clock in the morning and was lit. And that, you know, I fell in love. First time I snorted Roxy. So those, so that night me and Anthony take off. Anthony's got an ounce of cocaine in his pocket. He don't tell me it. We get, as soon as we leave the job, he pulls out this fucking, that's not a blow. And I was like, so me and Anthony start doing cocaine right then and there um, a lot from this place is however far it was. We drove through the night, whatever job that was, we left there and went to his boy Johnny's house at five o'clock in the morning, his cocaine drink buddy. So we had there at five and do coke for like 16 hours, something, you know, into the next day, no sleep. I remember telling him, take me home. My wife thinks I'm out of town working. I'm, uh, you know, doing cocaine with his boy, Johnny. So he takes me home like the next day at five o'clock. So that was what kind of person Anthony was. And so this type of people that I hung out with in these times and days. So uh, Anthony used to get lots and lots of cocaine and have me cook it up. He didn't know how to cook it up. So we smoked crack like a madman. At 21-ish, around that time, I had met this big coke dealer and was a mad crackhead and used to go and hang out with this guy. And he would have prostitutes in the room, two, three prostitutes all the time, uh, people coming and going, wheeling and dealing. He winds up getting busted and going he gets extradited back to where he's from. And um, so these, I take over his spot as um, giving these prostitutes rides to go run trips, right? So I become that guy for a year. And I talked about that. So those were wild, crazy days as well. And the guys that the girls used to get, their, um, their Johns and their, their bosses was all, you know, criminal underworld, mafia type shit, right? All, you know, this was the kind of guys that, you know, line up prostitutes, you know, ballers, people that know shit, tons of people. And I was in on a lot of those um, conversations and taking these girls to meet this guy and their, their meeting and et cetera and, and who and whatever else. But I drove and I had to carry a piece in those days. And those were wild fucking times. And there were many times I had to go up in rooms. It's times I've seen and, and uh, witnessed shit that I wish I w wouldn't have, right, follow. So I don't even like to talk about some shit at, at all. It, it upsets me. Um, you know, it, it rehashes bad memories. Um, and I have a lot of bad memories. Lots and lots of them. I watched two people try to kill themselves in front of me at 15. That wasn't very comforting. Seeing a lot of crazy way out there shit. Um, so from 21, I met this major cocaine dealer, crackhead, and then moved in with the stripper, went to jail, get out. And it, I don't start opiates until I'm about... 28, 20, 28, 29, maybe. I got married at 27. I met my wife. I still wasn't, hadn't done opiates. I can remember um, we got, we had to split up because we got an argument and a fight and I broke kitchen table and I had charges on me. I couldn't be around my kids and this kind of shit. So my wife and kids had to go over at her mother's house and I couldn't come around at this time. It was like a few months and I uh, had a dip out from uh, DFAX. I spoke about this. I couldn't go in. So I had to wait a month to clean out a weed in my system because I knew they were going to piss me and I go in and they piss me and it takes me a minute to get my kids back. And, uh, just because the boys were in the, um, in the, we lived in a trailer 
And just because the boys were in their bedrooms, in their in their bedroom, they were considered in the house and um, child endangerment. Just for being in the house and me breaking the kitchen table. Yeah, and the, so I had these kind of stupid ass charges. Uh, years later, I went to jail, as I've discussed, for spanking my kids with a belt. It shows up two felonies, literally spanking a belt. Now is considered um, aggravated assault. Look it up. It's in the first paragraph. The first page about uh, aggravated assault speaks of a belt on everything. You can go find this out yourself. <laughs> so more shit. It took me two and a half years to get my voice back. Spent six months in jail. Two months prior, I spent eight months in jail. Um, spent a year waiting to go to court that I before I could see my kids. It was it was six. It was six months before I seen my kids, and I did it illegally. All right, I wasn't, I wasn't, couldn't be around them at all. Talk to them, this kind of shit. They, you know, they put charges on you for that shit. You can't be around your defendants, hope, all that bullshit. You know, it's against the law. So I've been through hell with all that. So I can remember that when we were split up the first time. um, I stayed with this guy Emerson, and I've done videos about him. He was a major drug dealer, stole cars, you name it. Insurance fraud, check fraud, you name it. This guy was into it. Um, stealing cars, I still watch him steal cars several times. Um, when I stayed with him, I can remember him coming to me with a bottle of Percocets, and he had a a bottle of Percocets said, you want some? I said, nah, no thanks. I can remember that, you know, vividly. So you know, I was 28, 27, 28, 29, somewhere in there. And I still hadn't gotten addicted to opiates yet. So then um, fast forward and BG, BG was my brother-in-law's little friend. I got him a job. He uh, So he worked with me. And he started getting me Roxy's from this chick, this older woman, Brenda. And, you know, like I mean, everything else, I, you know, I don't go to BG anymore. I go straight to her and she's my pill lady. So that's when I started liking and getting addicted to Roxy's for the first time. We'd snort a few and I'd run out and I remember being sick for a day or two, but, but nothing comparatively to what I would endure years in the future. So that lasted. There were, you know, there were times like I wasn't, um, like I I couldn't have a Roxy every day, right, type shit, right? Like I could get one on Fridays or a couple times during the week. I might make a move by this, by this time. I got the boys. I got rent. So um, it was a progressive thing, right? So it went from, you know, just – you know, more and more and more and more frequently and more currently. And, and, um, <clears throat> so I can remember traveling during those days at the same time. And so like, I would, you know, I'd have, I'd have like seven lower tab or the, uh, the polka dotted, the, the eggs, if you know what those were like stronger hydrocodone, but not perks at Roxy. So I started out with those. And I'd take one of those and, you know, I'd get off every morning. So that's where it started. And started there. My wife had the, <clears throat> the purple speckled eggs, I think they call them. And then my mother's, then my wife's grandfather started getting Percocets. My wife starts getting his Percocets, taking grandpa's Percocets. Um, then... Grandpa passed away, and her mom had done pills and all this shit from young child, right? Her mom, like, never, my wife's mom, like, never grew up, never, you know, was always under Grandpa's wing, pretty much. Grandpa paid for everything. Her husband worked, but still hard to um, explain. So my wife's mother was like her best friend, in other words, right? Not her mother, but more like a friend. And uh, so like any and every friend, um, you know, um, my they, my wife 
and her and her mom lived close we lived close to each other right so we lived at one place and then i made it a point to get a little closer when grandpa uh 